What's up, Bills Mafia? Welcome to the NFL Scouting Combine here in Indianapolis. Maddie Glab alongside our GM, Brandon Bean. And Brandon, we're sitting in the suites right now. This is where the interviews go down. I've heard several scouts and, and you yourself say this is such a valuable part of the scouting combine. How do these interviews help shape who you want to draft at the end of the day? Yeah, it's another piece. I mean, you're obviously, you, you start with the film in the fall and, and this is the first time unless we've met them at a senior bowl or another all-star game that we've really got a chance to, to meet some of these young men. And so it's great. We watch, you know, we watch tape with them. We ask them about some of their stories, where they transferred from. Uh, and we're trying to pick out personality, learns, understand some of the things that, you know, maybe come up on tape that we don't understand, or maybe a certain way they were used, um, trying to figure out their knowledge. What are they walking in with day one? And then, you know, what do we need to find out more? Some of these guys we may go, I need to find out more of his processing speed or or what concepts he understands. And it's not maybe it's not their fault that they came from a simple offense or defense. And so we're just kind of using this. It's at least a starting point for us, and it'll answer some questions. Are we good? Do we know uh, what we need to know, or do we need to, to do more between now and the draft? We are shooting this interview at about 11 p.m. because your days are so stacked here. Describe an average day at the Combine. Yeah, I mean, the first few days, uh, you're, you're mostly focused on, on interviews, some in the morning, some at night, uh, meetings during the days. And then uh, starting tomorrow, we'll, we'll, get, we'll be back here in the morning to do a round of interviews. And then uh, the workouts start tomorrow, which is, which is good. It's fun. It's uh, good to see these guys move around athletically again and just watch them, in, you know, as they kind of mingle with their peers, who's who's the leaders of their group? You know, it goes beyond just, you know, what they do, you know, in their position groups. Yeah, you guys are watching just about everything that happens here. You've been to several combines, so do you have any good combine stories? Any stories that pop up in your mind when you're back in Indy every year? Yeah, I mean, there's a million of them. Uh, it's, it's funny, I've been coming here since 1999, I think was the first one, so I'm telling my age, and uh, it's funny. Uh, we interviewed uh, a guy the other day that uh, uh, I was in Carolina when we drafted his father. So uh, it, it, it made me feel pretty old pretty fast, uh, and he got a good kick out of it. But it's just, it's, it's every year, it's, uh, there's always some great stories. There's some great interviews, some things you can't share uh, that you find out about some of these guys. But there's always some funny stories uh, that come up. And, and again, the interview process is, is one of my favorite parts. It's not like you guys just come in this room, sit down and ask whatever questions come to mind. I mean, the work that goes into being ready for this week across your entire scouting department, I think is incredible. So describe that work that has to be done to make sure we are, we're, we're ready for this week. Yeah, I mean, we, we have all our area scouts here, our national scouts, our whole group, and they have assignments, they have position groups. Uh, we have some guys that are on the field with the workouts again just trying to find out information we have group leaders that um you know are part of you know a, a running back group or a wide receiver group or whatever and they're they're around them from the time they check in here the you know the four days they're here till they exit out and head to the airport and so um there's all sorts of assignments we have people that are following guys as we're doing interviews they're waiting on them to get out of one room get them to here and then kind of escort them from here and get them to the next. So everyone's got assignments. Uh, everyone understands what their role is and, and to make sure before we leave town that we get certain things answered. There are hundreds of prospects here. You've got tall guys, you've got small guys, you've got quick guys, you've got slower guys, you've got big school guys, smaller school guys. When it comes to the schools, how do you evaluate a smaller school guy versus a, a guy who went to an SEC school, let's say? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy. Um, you definitely want to find out um, where they're coming from. Maybe they've played at, at the Senior Bowl. Sometimes that'll help uh, if it's a smaller school person. If not, you, you're definitely at some point going to turn on the film. Most of these small schools at some point will play, you know, a Power 5 school. And, and you don't want to put too much weight into that, good or bad. But uh, they'll have some opportunities to at least, you know, do that. And, you know, it's it's still an educated guess, but it, it helps you put all the facts together to make the best decision in April. As you're shaping your opinions on this draft class, how do you balance all the information that's been given to you versus using your gut instincts? Yeah, I mean, that's you you've, you take all the knowledge, uh, not only of what you know now, but your experiences in past drafts and watching other 
you know, former or GMs that I worked for run the draft room. And, and so you're putting all that together and ultimately you're setting up your board, but sometimes it does come down to gut and feel and what has worked, what has not worked. But, you know, we, we're very collaborative here. We, you know, we involve our coaches. We, you know, we, our scouts do work starting in May of a year ago. It's a, it's an 11, you know, 11 and a half month process till the draft. So um, everyone's got to say, but ultimately a decision has to be made. And, and sometimes um, not, it's not 15 people all saying that. It may be 10, five, it may be 12, three or something like that. And sometimes you just got to go with your gut. You guys had a feel for Terrell Bernard. I mean, you draft him a couple years ago and he becomes the starting Mike linebacker. And I look back to that decision and what he's become, and it seemed like the perfect marriage between the scouting department and the coaching staff working together to get the most out of a player quickly in his NFL career. Would you describe it as that way now, seeing what what he's become in such a short amount of time? Yeah, I mean, Terrell was... um you know, a guy that, you know, we obviously knew we had Milano under contract. Um, Tr Tremaine was going into his last year. You would, you know, you never want to lose a Tremaine Edmonds, but you understand the business that it could happen. And so um, you're also thinking of what is your succession plan? You know, you're not always drafting just for, for the current year. You're always thinking about this year, of course, but also what the future looks like, you know, with your cap and the business part of it. And Terrell was a guy that, um, you know, we had – very good feel for at Baylor and what he did. And, you know, he was the glue of that defense. They had some other good players, but every, you know, everyone you talk to, including, you know, our contact as, as the head coach, they're just all backed who this guy was. And, you know, we, we spent time with him, very smart and just an instinctive player. And I think, you know, he's still a young player. He's still ascending, but you saw his instinct, especially for the pass game, really show up this year. You spoke to the succession plan there of the middle middle linebacker spot and just linebacker position group as well. But I look to the safety position here, and you've had Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, this, this tandem that has been incredible for seven years. And it's probably best case scenario what you dream of as a GM to get two guys who can play together for seven years. But to begin thinking of a succession plan for that position, how tough is it to know, you know, we're not going to get another 10 years out of these two. We need to start thinking about the future, but maybe not putting, maybe not thinking about that position group as we need another Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer because maybe those exact guys aren't out there anymore. Yeah, I mean, you're looking for good football players, and it's it's hard to sit here and say you're going to find a Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. That's it's probably not fair um, to those players or to our team. So, uh, yes, those are two guys that have played a lot of great football for us, and and yeah, they're they're at the back end of their career, and so we do have to you know think about it whether it happens this year or like we did with Bernard, have something for the future years. And so, um, I think you you're just looking for good football players, just like Terrell. I mean. Look at Tremaine. Tremaine's 6'5", uh, long, athletic, rangy. And then Terrell Bernard uh, is not 6'5", and probably doesn't have the top end speed that Tremaine has, but he brings some different qualities. And so uh, we would attack it the same way at the safety position. If you look at this draft class, wide receiver is a position group that a lot of people are saying, hey, you can get an X receiver out of this position group that's got good size, that's got great speed, that can be a difference maker on the field. Why isn't it as simple as just saying that and being like, okay, yeah, we can draft that guy and he becomes exactly that, regardless of the position group I'm talking about. You hear from, you hear from fans and analysts saying, this position group has this, this position group has that. Why isn't it that simple when you, when you get into the scouting department? Yeah, I mean, you, you, it's, it's not a cookie-cutter deal. And, and when you're talking about the position, you're talking about receivers probably – um, I call it, it's probably like closest, like Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors, what do you want? And I know one of the questions came up in my presser uh, the other day is just, don't you need this or don't you need that? And it's, uh, you're looking for good football players and uh, you want guys that, we talk about versatility all the time, guys that can play more than one spot. And you don't just want all small guys or all big guys or, or just red zone targets. Or uh, you want a, a guy that's a good football player that's smart, can play multiple spots and brings an element. You know, we've talked about rack or um, downfield vertical speed or a size can win on third and three running a slant route that Josh can, he's just going to be able to man up and go and uh, the 50-50 fade ball. So anything that can provide 
Joe Brady and, and Josh Allen and, and our offense with a mismatch weapon because you're going to play different defenses every every week. This is a tough league, and, and some teams are going to press you. Some are going to play off. Uh, some are going to blitz the heck out of you. Some are going to go uh, too high shell. So you're you're just looking for good football players and, and opportunities to provide mismatches, you know, for Josh and Joe. This week is a long week, but it's almost halfway over. You're almost there. What's up next for you? Yeah, I mean, when we get back, um, we're still trying to work under the cap. You know, there are some agents here, and and Kevin Megank and Jim Overdorf and some of our pro scouts are heading those up. I try and hop into one here or there when I can fit it in my schedule, but they're working on some of those conversations, um, you know, with some of the guys that we're working on to try and either get uh, extended, restructured, whatever it is, because we got a couple weeks and, and that we have to be in cap compliant. You know, I think everyone knows we're, we're over the cap right now. And uh, so first and foremost, that's our number one intention there. Um, continue to have discussions with um, guys that are free agents, on, you know, on our team. And then at next, we'll, we'll focus on what free agents are out there, how much money we have, and what areas we need to attack. All right, Brandon, thanks for the time. We're excited to see what you do in free agency in just a couple of short weeks. You're welcome, Maddie. Good to see you.